Hey everyone, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in to Relevant Jukebox, and today I'm back with another video in my vinyl collection series going over the whole thing, 10 random records at a time. I still haven't gone too crazy with many new records entering my collection as of recently, but I got a couple new ones here to show you. Uh, along with some older good ones. So before we get into these records, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Also drop a like on the video so more people can see it and hit that bell to be notified whenever I put out new videos uh, doing record reviews or any new vinyl collection videos and things like that. So with that out of the way, let's get into the records here. Starting with the new pickups as usual. Uh, first off, I have Japanese Breakfast Jubilee. Uh, I really enjoyed this album uh, that just came out about a month ago from Japanese Breakfast. The first time I was really like blown away by her music. Um, and yeah, I positive review for the record. Really enjoyed it. Loved all the songs on it just about. Um, and this is one of the limited uh, releases. Now this thing was like sold out for the most part. Just about everywhere I went to go look for it. Um, and I did find a copy through Brooklyn Vegan actually. And it's the limited clear with yellow... Uh, like swirl, splatter, smoke, whatever you want to call it, um, which looks really, really awesome. Uh, definitely matches that cover art beautifully. I love the labeling with all, you know, the, um, the peppers on it and stuff. It's really, really great. So moving right along to another newer album that I've picked up, and that's Playboy Cardi's Whole Lot of Red. You bet your ass I bought this when I found out it came out on vinyl. Um, I still enjoy this record. I know it's got a lot of mixed rev like results as far as like the fan base, critics, whatever. A lot of people seem to either love this or hate this. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, yes, it's not like the most consistent project, but um, I do think it was pretty really uh, pretty cool. Um, this is a double LP too, which is great. Um, just a standard black pressing there with the classic red with the blood font there which looks awesome on the labeling you know waiting to see if he's ever going to do die lit on vinyl i would totally buy that moving into some older releases i have nico's chelsea girl uh pretty classic record from nico right here really enjoy it um i am honestly pretty late to the nico party i guess overall uh i first heard of her obviously with the Vel velvet underground um, on that first self-titled record, but I never really delved into her uh, discography as a solo artist until, you know, recently. Um, and this is one of the better ones i found, uh, for sure. This is a standard black. Um, I, it's like a thicker pressing. It feels like it's 180 gram, um, and it's done by Four Men With Beards, which is a fun label. Um, you got that on the labeling there, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, definitely um, give this record a listen. I know it's, you know, one that's been talked about to death, I'm sure, at this point, but... Um, very sweet melodies, really gentle listen. Uh, you know when you got uh, cover art with a lot of font on the back, you know it's probably a good one, and this is a good one. Next up, I got New Order's Low Life. Probably one of the more maybe overlooked records in the New Order discography, as like, you know, Power Corruption Lies gets all the attention, it seems like, but this is a good one. Um, this is an original pressing, too. I uh, don't remember exactly which one, but it does have that original OBI slip intact, which is really nice. It's got the track listing on the back. Um, it also came with the original inner sleeve, which has some like, you know, really dreamy looking photos uh, on it, which is kind of cool. And the record itself isn't too flattering, just a black pressing here. Standard stuff, but it's in really good condition. I picked this up a little while back when I was going through like a crazy New Order phase back in the day, and I had to have all their albums and you know, this one was still an affordable price. I found it at a local record shop, so still a really good one, though. I really enjoy this New Order album and do suggest it. Next up is the Jesus Lizard's Goat. Um, yeah, probably, I mean, actually, the only Jesus Lizard album in my collection, sadly. I would like to add Head one day. But yeah, this is a really awesome, you know, heavy alternative rock record from the 90s. Um, Jesus Lizard is, you know, one of those cool, awesome, like, weird, freaky bands. Look at the, um... Ooh, look at that cover art, or the um, gatefold art in the middle there, rather. It's pretty uh, weird overall, pretty strange. And it came with like a little inner sleeve that's got some write-ups on it, um, some more images of the band in there. And this is not an original pressing. This is a reissue um, on Touch and Go, but it's a nice thick pressing. I, this is probably at least 150 gram or something, um, standard black. Um, but yeah. Pretty solid album. I mean, if you are new to the Jesus Lizard uh, discography, uh, this one might be a good place to start. Uh, it's pretty much where I started. Next up, moving into some abstract hip-hop, I have Gene Grey, Quelle Chris, Everything's Fine. 
Um, yeah, this is a pretty solid album from two rappers I enjoy quite a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, just if you're into that, like, you know, abstract, oddball kind of stuff, um, Mad Lib, Quasimodo, Stone's Throw era, you know, with even like a weirder twist, this is probably for you. Pretty enjoyable record overall. And I think, I don't know exactly what press this is or how it's limited to, but it's on a really nice, like, green vinyl, which looks really cool. Um, yeah, I love the color on this. And I love, I love the labeling too. Um, it's just like almost like a polygon version of the two of them. And it's a double LP and the other one is like a bubblegum pink, which looks really great as well. I mean, overall, oh man, I mean, they just knocked it out of the park, I think, with this vinyl pressing. It looks so cool. Next up, I have Flying Lotus, You're Dead. Uh, probably the last Flying Lotus release that I, you know, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, you know, I liked Flamagra when it first came out, but then it kind of fell off a little bit for me. Um, this one's still pretty cool though. Love the artwork on it. Um, it's pretty crazy. It is a nice little gatefold here with even crazier art on it. If you have not seen it already, I forget the name of the artist on here, but he is a famous anime artist, I believe. And all that continues onto the inner sleeves, which looks really cool. Um, and then, uh, on the back, you have some even more deranged looking stuff in there, which I'm not even entirely sure if I can show. And it is a double LP, standard black. You know, nothing crazy on this one, but, you know, nice vinyl presentation overall. Um, sounds great, you know, still a fun album. Moving into a classic punk record, uh, self-titled from Violent Femmes. Yeah, this is a, this is a good one. Um, everybody knows Blister in the Sun, but, you know, it's a good record if you haven't gone all the way through um, yet, um, which I'm sure there isn't too many people that haven't gone through the whole record, but if you're out there, definitely give this a listen. Uh, here's the inner sleeve. Boom. And this was a limited Newberry Comics pressing, so it is the green marble, which looks really nice. And it's got that Slash magazine labeling on there, which is what Playboy Cardi took for inspiration on Whole Lot of Red, which I just showed a couple records earlier, which I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, this is a great, like, deluxe reissue. It sounds awesome. Next up, I got Brian Eno's Here Come the Warm Jets. And this is a Brian Eno record. I was slightly late to the table as well, actually. Um, I picked this up at a local record store um, and because I had heard that the opening track on it was like a pretty big inspiration to Kevin Shields um, when he was, you know, writing My Bloody Valentine stuff. And you can definitely hear that, um, at least from the way that they, you know, Brian strums the guitar. Um, so yeah, this is a fun one, though. Not my favorite Eno record, but um, it's still got uh, some pretty cool stuff on here. Um, here's the labeling. Um, Editions EC or EG, I believe. Uh, EG. Um, standard black, nothing too special about that, but um, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice original pressing that I was happy to pick up for an affordable price. And rounding out this batch of records, I have Random Access Memories by Daft Punk, RIP Daft Punk, uh, officially splitting up. Um, I never got to see them live, which is really sad, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I have this record and their other ones to, you know, do my own little dance party if I ever wanted to. Um, here's the gatefold with a really futuristic looking piano. Uh, that's also upside down, but yeah. Here's like this really big book that it came with. Um, yeah, pretty nice. It's got some lyrics on the inside, some credits and all that good stuff. I won't bother thumbing through all of it. You get the idea. And this is a double LP, really thick. Nice 180 gram pressing uh, with the classic Columbia label on here. This is truthfully not my favorite Daft Punk record. Um, out of their big three, I'd probably put it number three, actually. Uh, I am still a huge fan of Homework. I think that's their best album. This one's fun. Um, I do like it. It was fun when it dropped, um, and there's some really good songs on here, you know. So that's going to do it for this installment of my Vinyl Collection video series. I'll be back with another one shortly for you guys, so I hope everyone's doing well. Um, as usual, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, and if you want more content from me, hit the subscribe button. Peace.